Remember video stores? Back before everything migrated to the internet and vending machines, renting a movie used to be an experience. Walking through the aisles, judging movies based solely on their covers. Let's rent this one. Check this one out. This one just got the number 13 on it. It has to be good. As a kid, I got most of my Super Nintendo games from local video stores that were closing down. One of which was the Super Aquatic Games. The Super Aquatic Games was released in 1992. This was around the time where every game developer had a mascot character that was trying to be the next Mario. And for Millennium Games, their mascot was James Pond, Secret Agent Mudskipper. This is the third game in the franchise, the first two being puzzle platformers, and this one being some kind of sports game. Now maybe it's just me, but I don't really see the logic between jumping from Secret Agent to Trackstar. I imagine that conversation went a little like this. Reginald, they're British by the way, Millennium's a British company. Reginald, yes Lewis, I have an idea for our third game. Oh, do you now? So, so you know how James is a secret agent? Yes. What if? Yes. In this game, Yes. James. Yes, yes. Is. Out with it, man! A track star. But was it a lucrative career change? I guess we're just gonna have to play the game and find out. Seamlessly transition to couch. That subtlety right there, that's a seamless transition. The Super Aquatic Games. Starring the Aquabats? Don't get your hopes up. It's not these Aquabats. It's these Aquabats. These guys are your main characters. Also, what's the deal with the scientist penguins? Are they supposed to be the referees? Why does a ref need a lab coat? All right, let's get this show on the road. It's time to compete in the Super Aquatic Games. First event, 100 meter splash. 100 meter splash, 100 meter dash. I'm probably gonna have to run. How do I move? None of the buttons make me move forward. I figured out how to jump though. Jumping is no problem. So if the D-pad doesn't move you, and there's no button to move, how am I supposed to splash for 100 meters? Adding insult to injury, if you don't move in the first four seconds, you get kicked by a penguin. I get it, game. I'm supposed to run. I just gotta figure out how to do it first. Apparently you're supposed to run by pushing A and B as fast as humanly possible, because that's what people think about when they think of running in games, mashing the crap out of buttons. So I get this is a minigame, and button mashing in minigames isn't a foreign concept, but let me tell you why this sucks. Here we have your standard Super Nintendo controller. Note the location of the A and B buttons. In order to beat the level, you're forced into holding a controller like this and going nuts on them buttons. It gets pretty sloppy. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you don't reach the end in 17 seconds, you lose. And to continue, you have to do more button mashing. Ain't no rest for an Aquabat! After you run like Jesus and beat the frog, you get to see James's victory dance. Next up, Kipper watching. You're a seal, and you have to protect your seal buddies from beach balls so they can nap in peace. Just, just one question. Who would purposely throw things at seals? Seals are either terrifyingly aggressive or adorable, and the adorable ones are still pretty aggressive. I mean, I can't think of anyone who would be like, hey, look at all those sleeping seals. Let's throw stuff at them. What's funny is they don't even really seem to care. If one gets hit, he'll just wake up, see me frantically trying to deflect beach balls, and go back to sleep. He'll be like, Huh? Beach balls? Yeah. The third event is just called Bouncy Castle, and it really fits the aquatic theming of the game, let me tell you about it. You're in a room with these two orange spotted couch things. Are those... are those eyes? Are these things alive and they're just sitting there watching me jump on them? The point of this game is to jump on those th things, get mad air, and do tricks. Pro tip for all you aspiring Aquabats out there. You can jump from the couch to the sidewall springboards and trick through the ceiling to get more points. Because everyone knows, if you do a flip, you can phase through solid objects. Feeding time! This game is pretty similar to Kipper Watching, only instead of protecting seals from beach balls, you're saving fish from getting caught, battered, and served for $4.99 at Long John Silver's. Just dump the candy down their gullet and they're off to live another day. If you don't make it the whole three minutes, you'll still pass the event, but this starfish is gonna really question how you got here in the first place. The next game's called Shell Shooting, and it puts us back in the random ass castle. Whoever owns this castle has got to be nuts. Because what sane person would have machines that do nothing but produce hermit crabs? And these hermit crabs mean business too. They have got places to be. Hey, out of the way! Move it, buster! Get out of here! This may be the most convoluted event in the game. 
You're supposed to bounce a red crab, catch it in a pan, and then use that crab to pop the balloons on the ceiling. You can only bounce a crab if you jump on its side. The hit detection is pretty iffy, and if you don't angle your jump just right, the crab gets crushed, and then you have to sit there and watch its soul fly off to our hermit crab heaven. Tour de Grass. This game looks familiar. This is the same as the first game, except this time you're a dolphin on a unicycle that has to jump over crabs. These crabs do not look excited to be here. That is the face of terror and regret. This game is pretty easy, but it's mainly a warm-up for Leapfrog. This game is exactly like the last one, only really friggin' dumb. You have 28 seconds to get to the end, only instead of jumping over crabs, you have to jump over electric eels and puddles. When you hit a puddle, you lose all of your speed. You play as a frog, and water is bad. Logic. A plus. If you hit an eel, it electrocutes you and you lose all your speed. So you're in the air thinking about your life choices and the eel just laughs at you like, <laughs> I can't believe somebody actually bought this game. <laughs> More obstacles wouldn't be a bad thing if the jumping actually worked. There's a delay between pushing the button and when you actually jump. So you have to time it just right in order to keep any speed you may have built up. That in combination with the frantic button mashing movement, it's just, <sighs> this game sucks. So here we are, the last event, Relay Race. A sampling of every terrible running minigame you've played all rolled into one. Whew. Here we go. You start off as a green frog, run down the hill, tag out with Dolphin Friend, unicycle over the hermit crabs from the castle. By the way, they explode now. They ain't having any more of that getting crushed business. Tag out with Seal, switch control schemes. Get over the crab, get over the crab, get over the crab. Get over the crab! Screw you, crab! Hit the starfish with the beach ball. Collect five candies. Only five candies. Throw the bucket full of candy and launch James Bond through a hoop onto a spring, landing safely on the other side to run to the finish line, all while avoiding hermit crabs that electrocute you. All in 50 seconds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to train up for this one. Thanks for watching. If you liked what you saw and want to see more videos, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Social media information is in the description if you want to stay connected with the channel or with me. I also play Dungeons and Dragons with my buddy Chad Lanis, and you can check out some of the highlights by clicking on that box over there. Go ahead, give it a click. See what all the hubbub's about. <laughs>